Okay, in this video we're going to actually install the EOS software and uh, get started on some actual development. Um, I'm here at the official uh, developers.es.io um, website. This is um, provided by Block One, the um, support engineers at Block One and put this all together. Uh, so we'll kind of be following this just to get up started. Uh, I figured I'd show you this link in the video just so you are aware that it exists and you can do your own you know, explorations through this website. Um, so we'll just click getting started and I'll kind of just get you familiar with the documentation right now and then we'll um, walk into actually uh, installing EOSIO. So here they have this brief overview and they kind of show you the three main parts associated with EOSIO. There's Cleos, there's Kios D and then Nodios. Uh, I've heard these all pronounced a bunch of different ways, and I'm sure I'll pronounce them a bunch of different ways myself. <coughs> um, so what you typically do when working with EOS is you'll spin up Nodios. It'll start producing blocks. You'll do it locally to start with, right? This is similar to uh, the Truffle Suite in Ethereum as well. Uh, you'll do like test RPC, and then eventually you'll do you know, on the test net, you'll actually run your code and then you'll go on the main net eventually. So Nodios is kind of a similar um, to test RPC in that case. And then Kleos is the um, CLI you'll use to interact with Nodios and then also Kios D. Uh, Kios D is going to hold all your wallets, your names, your private keys, all that stuff. Um, this is local, so it doesn't get touched by Nodios. That way, um, a hacker can't, like, you know, somehow manage to get your keys. Uh, so this is like a, a local daemon, which is why it has D at the end of it. Uh, that uh, it, All it does essentially is it holds your, your, your wallet data and then you'll use Kleos to actually sign transactions with this wallet data here in Kios D. Uh, we'll dive into this you know, in much more detail later, but this is just a brief overview of like this is what EOS IO is in a nutshell. Um, they tell you what's next is to use the Docker quick start and, and Docker is good, it's very very quick you can get up and running and um, start producing blocks immediately but it doesn't give you quite the same control uh, over like your setup locally when you're developing uh, another thing I want to do is go through setting up an IDE because that seems to be asked quite frequently in the telegram um, and, and I, like I, I'm sure you can do that with docker I'm sure that's relatively easy but it in my opinion it's much easier to do that locally so uh, I'm gonna actually go through and do the installation um, Word of warning, I'm sure some of you who are already developing on EOS are already well aware of this. It, it takes a long time to build the code. So, you know, I'm going to show you the commands and then cut the video. That way we're not sitting here for hours. It also takes a long time to run the test as well. Um, so I'm not going to go through the Docker quick start. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on build options. Or sorry, getting getting the code. And then we should be able to follow these commands right here to actually uh, get the code. Uh, I've already done it, so I'm going to call it uh, something else. That way, uh, again, it doesn't take forever. So what I'm doing here is I'm cloning into the EOS repo, the same one we were using kind of previously to go through the white paper. Um, and what it's going to do is this dash dash recursive will go in and clone the submodules as well. They make a little note here that. Um, hey, if, if you forget to pass recursive and you just clone and something bad happens or you get some sort of weird error, you can always do this later, um, get the, the uh, submodules that way. Uh, so after you've pulled down the code, this takes quite a while as well. There's a lot of code involved, uh, which is why the build takes forever. What you should be able to do is go and use <coughs> one of the auto build scripts for the various um, operating systems. Uh, I might actually just kill this and skip it just because um, I've, I've built it already so I can kind of show you what it's going to look like after the clone, the submodules are finished. Um, so if I go into auto build script, you'll see there's a, a, a simple build script and you just need to go into the EOS directory wherever you clone it. In my case I would have cloned it into uh, EOS, EOS video directory, I would CD into that and then run this um, EOSIO underscore build dot sh uh, which is here. Actually, you know what, I'll, I'll cut this out and I'll do a fresh install from start. How does that sound? 
Okay, so um, I finished populating the submodules. I cut all that part out of the video, and now if we go into EOSIO video, uh, we'll see this EOSIO build script, um, just like they say in the documentation, and you'll simply run that. I think it asks you one small question. Oh, it a if you're missing dependencies, it will ask you if you want to install those dependencies. In my case, I, I've already done this, so I already installed all the dependencies. Um, Again, this takes a long, 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 long time, so don't be alarmed if your build takes a couple hours. Um, I'm just going to skip this and just go right into the my pre-built directory that already exists. Um, so we'll start from there, there in the next video. See you then.